Hey friends and fans of Bob's Barn Workshop. Well, here we are up to the barn at the lake. And we are working on installing a shower stall. But, we also need to put a water heater in this building. And what I bought was a Titan instantaneous electric water heater. I already have two of these running one here in the trailer and one under the kitchen sink at home. They work marvelously. They make hot water. They're efficient. They don't heat water forever but that you're not using. Uh, I have to install. I added a 50 amp uh, range pigtail to it so I can plug it in and service it. It was a real pain in the butt putting this cable in here. It normally comes with uh, a smaller wire attached to it and I put just the plug on the end and that's what I highly recommend doing. Putting the pigtail on it was a big mistake but once I got into it uh, I was committed and I should have been committed because it drove me crazy. It was tough work. So what I need to do is I'm going to run a range outlet to match this connector which I have right here. I'm going to put that under the sink here and I'm going to put the water heater under the sink, but first I have to run a series of holes through all these studs with my electric drill because the panel's right around the corner. So I'm going to drill those holes. You don't need to watch me do all that. And uh, we'll pull some wire in. And then we'll show you how you actually hook that up correctly. Now we're at the panel. point where I've drilled my holes. And make sure you drill your holes in the center of the stud. And try to drill them as straight in the line as you can. And you notice I just watched this line that was on the uh, OSB underneath. And that's what I used to guide my drilling. And uh, it makes pulling stiff wire like this. Six, six, this is six gauge number uh, six copper, um, two conductor, one ground wire. Because that's what this is, a pure 220. See so it's sliding right in there just like butter. And I got the wire laid out straight behind me. And we're just dragging it through, keeping it flat, keeping it pretty. Keep it a little pretty. You know, this is going to be exposed forever in this barn, so I got a little tangle up back here now. I hope I got me enough wire. Oh, yeah, I do. I measured it, so I should have. And I'm going to sneak it down behind the dryer here. I wanted to keep this up high because someday I might be putting the water drain in here to that sink. Okay, I'm stepped against the wall. See, I got a few feet out here. I'm going to bring you right around to the panel, which we had a nice 200 amp service put in here. I should say I put it in. And we're coming around the corner right here. And this is going to be the tough part because this wire is stiff to bend. An inch or two at a time. so I just need to reach the ground and I need to reach the breaker. Alright, so I'm going to go into the bottom of the panel over there in that corner. Let me uh, get the panel cover off. It's just six screws and we'll go in and I'll show you what we now, got. Now, word of warning here and a disclaimer, if you're not competent or confident to work inside an electrical box, don't do it. I was a professional electrician so I have many years of experience with this. Um, 
as I said, if you're not confident with this, don't do this. So don't lose your cover screws. We'll uh, fast forward to this. Okay, I'll come back when I get this. Well, this only take a second. You're not getting bored yet, are you? That's the water pump for my... Uh, I have a long ways to my septic tank from here, from this building, so I had to put in a sewage macerator and uh, transfer pump, which is just a little box down here. It costs $1,600. But it does the job that I need so I could have a bathroom over here in this building. I'm holding this cover on because it's kind of just hanging on the circuit breakers right now. Because these holes are generously sized, so it can adjust to the breakers, and I'm just going to lift it straight off. All right, now, oh, ooh, look at that. Looks like a professional did that. Oh, yeah, I did that. I believe we built this barn in 2007. Okay, so I'll bring that wire in right here in the bottom. And let's see, where's my nearest ground bus? Well, there's the ground bus. So I just need enough wire, and that's plenty. Um, green wire is your earth ground. There's a connector screw. I don't know why that's in there. Um, really nicely done. 220 neutral. Neutral comes out, goes to another 100 amp breaker, which I put at the top to go to the trailer itself. Neutral and ground are separated. These two buses down here, don't touch anything, are uh, neutral, which means they're grounded to earth. Your ground wires come up to the ground bar, which is actually bonded to the case. The neutral and the ground are bonded together with a screw that you put through the front of the panel box. That's the only place where your neutral and ground, ground being it has ground rods. Neutral is the zero voltage point. Your two hot wires are the two out, at, outside ones here. So this is going to be really easy. I need to put in a 50 amp breaker, which I think this one is. Got to get my glasses. <laughs> and we'll be back in a minute. I think what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to put the, the outlet plug box on the other end first. And then... Uh, move it and screw it to the wall and shove the slack this way so I don't have to do that while I'm on my hands and knees underneath the uh, sink in there. So I'm just looking for some screws. All right, so back. just a quick tutorial on this. I don't know that I brought my battery charger so we might be out of luck if I want to do any more videoing. But now I'll take it with a grain of salt, the newer requirements may call for a four wire uh, connection in your circumstances. So, uh, because you might need a neutral. This is strictly a 220 connection, so there is no need for a neutral. Let's see now, let's kind of clamp. Right there. I'm going to go by the Explore that and get that out of the way. Okay. Now it's black and white, but we all know that it looks like that'll go right in there. These little guys, well, they even give us money. Of course, they're. Uh, we need to twist the bottom out of this. I don't know why they don't knock it out, but you're going to have... Oh, they got it so you can bring it in the back. Okay, so we're going to clamp on here like so. This is very, very stiff wire. <laughs> that guy just needs to be cut off a little bit. I don't have my good electrician's pliers here. Again, this is basically, on this setup, this is just going to be a... Uh, An earth, uh, yes, earth ground, not 
neutral. <clears throat> Watch out, those wires are stiff and sharp. Okay, we'll bring her through. We're gonna cut off about three quarters of an inch of insulation. This is pretty awkward. My knife has got a really dull blade in it. Of course, that really helps everything work nice. I've been cutting sheetrock with it, haven't I? Well, this is plenty of wire for this job. They claim it takes 54 amps at peak, but from experience having these around the house, they rarely, rarely, they don't ever go on full power. They always modulate, which means they pulse. So you're never getting... 54 amps would be the full output power of this with the elements continuously on. All right. So, being uh, copper wire, we don't need any uh, wire goop on these. Some wires, aluminum wires specifically. You need to put a paste in them. Oh, let's see, is that solid? Yeah, okay. So you just back your screws out. Now these are made to slide out so you can get the wires in easy. See I can get all three. Just slide up in there. And we're going to tighten these up. Technically I should be painting this black. So I will do that with a Sharpie. Now these are the old fashioned crush the wire kind of screws. <laughs> Make sure you get them nice and snug, but don't reef them so bad that you're going to cut your strands. Make sure your uh, conductors are all the way up so you can see the tip of the wire. and your uh, earth ground so if you look at the cable that I connected to the heater the center prong just connects to a screw in the frame of the heater okay so now we're all set here I got the bottom clamp I need to connect it's hot and sweaty in here today that just goes together with two little screws. You can put mine right on the outside. You can put it on the inside. But this is, doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, Mrs. And you'll see that this has two little cuts in it to go over the screw heads. And we'll tighten them up. This is what we used to call a range receptacle way back in the day. But uh, as I said nowadays, I believe ranges are for conductor. I'm sorry, I got this off camera for you probably. But I, this wire is stiff and I need to... Hold it off to the side here. So I can tighten those set screws. And then there's two long, two more clamp screws. I've been waiting for years to get this. This bathroom done over here. This thing's been in since we built this barn in 2007. But we didn't put the water in here right away, I don't believe. Uh, I had run the pipe over here. Okay, so now I'm going to go under the sink. And I'm going to attach this, this uh, outlet 
to the wall in there with a couple of screws. Okay, we got the outlet fixed. Um, of course, as I said, you can see our conductors deep in, deep in, deep in. Got the connector set up so the screws don't hit the wall. Now I just got to screw it to the wall underneath here and uh, then we'll work on the panel. You don't need to see me screw this to the wall. There's just some screws that go inside of it. I hope you can see in there what I got to do. Oh, of course they give me straight, straight screws so I'm not using those. I got the wire slack pulled up so I can get this in here. cover on like so put our screw in and when we get the we get our uh, heater mount that'll be right out of the way see I don't even need to put a connector or a stable or nothing on that what I need to do is I need to cut my water heater line in here somewhere, come out and over and down underneath the sink a little farther. But right now we just got our 220. So let's go do the other end. Now if you check out in these panel boxes, you'll see some of the knockouts are only about oh, 7 eighths, 3 quarters of an inch. Some of them have a center and then a little bit bigger one. we got to use the one that's a little bit bigger because I am putting a 3 quarter inch connector in here. So it looks like all my wires are just going to run right up here. So all I'm going to do is take a screwdriver and hammer and pop that out, twist it out. To do that, we just need a little screwdriver. Pop that baby out. Now these buses are hot. Those prongs you see right there. So if, as I said, if you're not confident doing this, don't get inside your panel box. Disclaimer. And then you just, once you get this bent, then you just rock it a couple of times back and forth like that. And boom, she comes right out. All right, so don't get your knuckles into the panel box. You'll be all set. Put our connector in there, we take a hammer, tighten up that lock nut a little bit, she's all tight, take your wire, I've got plenty of wire, I'm going to have to trim it off here, excuse me while I whip this out. Got my radio here, I don't want to wreck my radio. Radio kill the video star, video kill the radio star. So you could, you know. So we're bringing this wire right up in. And again, you want to do this and make this look nice and neat. Now we're going to kink it this way. We're going to kink it that way and make an offset so we can put staple right there on the bottom. Make it look all purdy. Um, now the easiest thing to do is tighten the clamp. And 
you know, as I said, after doing this kind of work for years, this all seems simple to me. Just like uh, driving a nail, you know, to other people. Or changing the tire on a car. But if you have no experience, hopefully this will give you an idea that you can do it, but you just have to be safe. That's all, people. Just be safe. Now I'm going to take my knife blade. And I'm going to start in the middle of the wire. And I'm scoring it. But I'm controlling the tip of the knife. Okay, that's stripped way more than I need it to be. Okay, so we'll push that down there. We'll take this and we'll cut off the excess of the jacket. The first thing you want to hook up and get out of the way is your spare ground wire. And I need to come up about that high with it. So I'm cutting him off. You're cut off! And there's tons of uh, holes left here. Where's my first hole, available hole? It looks like right there. I need a smaller screwdriver. These other ones got wires in them. Now I've seen people double them up, but if you've got a big bus like this, you just don't need to. All right, so I backed him out. Again, you got to watch out because uh, these are still hot. Now it doesn't matter if you bump into your neutral bus, but you do want to watch banging into those hot wires on the breakers. So I'm being very careful. I stuck that guy through. I can see him all the way through the connector through the set screw. And he is tight right now. Okay. I'm gonna push and purdy that up. Again, be careful because these bare buses here are hot wires. Now, when I run a breaker like this, I need a 50. He's going to go right here. I like to take the closest wire to the side and make that my top wire. And uh, I got to go up here somewhere. So I'm just going to take these and cut them off a little bit longer than I need. But. <clears throat> It's a very tough wire. And actually, I could leave that on there. So I'm going to leave him that way. Yeah, I can push him back in there. Okay. And dre this is called dressing your wires. Dress your wires down to where you want them to be. I'm going to do the same thing with the other one. Get that bare wire so it don't get in your way. This is, again, very tough to cut with these. These aren't the right wires for this. These are wire cutters, not, or tin cutters, not wire cutters, but they'll do the trick. It's a little bit of a hack job. Okay. Now bend that one right down next to that one, even before we get in the panel. Now here you just need to, let me see how deep is this. These contacts are very shallow, so these just need to be about a half inch long stripped. You just ring them with your knife. And then you just turn the knife flat, shave off. You could use the tip of the blade. Mine's dull. <laughs> okay, so now we're going into this beast. Now this guy was set up to be the top. And I think maybe I'll put the breaker in. Now, you notice these clamps, if you can see that one opening up, it's kind of like a horseshoe. Now again, this is copper wire, so it doesn't need any kind of antioxidant on it. Some guys might do it. I've never seen it done. I've never done it. I've never had a copper, a tight copper connection fail or get too loose. Now these screws should be set so they don't come out. 
They don't fall out. I mean. Alright. Now to get the breaker in. Now you have to be careful doing this. Breaker is off. There's two hooks on the back of the panel. You hook them under that and then the front comes in. Now watch when you're pressing in that you don't slide off and into your uh, hot bus bars. That one just went right in there nice. Nice and tight. Same thing with the second one. I'm sweating like heck. It ain't because I'm nervous, because this just does not make me nervous anymore. Okay, that one just went in real nice, too. These are very hard to get dressed up nice. Now, I don't have a voltmeter with me. See that they're deep into the connector because how far I strip them. All right. They are totally out of the way. They're not rubbing on any sharp screws or anything in there. All right. Technically, according to code, I can just put some electrical tape on those, but I know I'm the only one here. I'll put a couple of rings on this end. I don't think I need to do it on the outlet end. I'm not going to. I didn't, did I? I'm going to ring a tape to indicate that it's a hot wire. And if you don't know that, what marker tape means, then again, you shouldn't be messing with this stuff. You may see white wires marked with colors, and that means that they're used as a hot wire. Because a lot of times in 12-2 wiring in your house, you'll wire switches. The white wire is used as a hot. Now, I'm going to leave that uncovered for now. We're all set to rock. All right, outlet installed. What do you think, guys? Sorry, I knocked you off in whack here. We'll go in and look at this again. Okay. You see my black and white wire coming up. I have a little marker tape on it. It goes up, loops up, dresses into that 50 amp breaker on the bottom left. The bare ground wire goes up to that bus bar that you can see. See where that red wire loops up and you'll see that shiny bus bar? That is your ground bus. That's where that connected because there's no neutral in this circuit. That's why I could use a three pin uh, plug and outlet. As I said, some of your new appliances use 110 volt motors and uh, they do require neutral so you'll have a four pin plug. But in this application it's pure 220. It isn't necessary. Alright. So I know there's going to be 220 on there because I know what I'm doing with this stuff. Good luck guys. God bless. Alright we'll guys and gals and fans. Bob's workshop. Barn workshop here. We're at the barn at Black Lake. 200 miles from home and I think the last time I was here my camera was battery was running dead and I forgot the charger so I couldn't show you all this construction but we have finished putting in the Titan electric water heater it's instantaneous it's perfect for the camp but I have two in my house at home one under the kitchen end and one under the bathroom end and I have two here one in each building I have a trailer house trailer for the main cottage and uh, this is the barn with the upstairs rooms, bedrooms, and, a sh and I just finished the bathroom. So as you can see, I installed a 50 amp line. That's six gauge copper coming from the panel to a range outlet, a range plug on a piece of number eight copper to eight two copper because it, it would not, I tried to use number six to replace the cable on the Titan and it was number eight cable coming out of it and it was just a couple foot too short so I had to put a new piece in there and uh, number six wouldn't fit in the terminals. 
Number eight copper will handle, handle the current just fine anyway, especially a short length like that. So anyway, the water gets nice and hot in the sink down here in the boathouse part. This is kind of like where we just wash up when we paint. It's kind of a slop sink and uh, we also, you know, clean fish and that kind of stuff here. And so this is just the, the drink refrigerator and overflow. So upstairs we go from rustic to resort. <laughs> I gotta grab my towels. Here we go. Okay, we're going to like, this is like uh, Dorothy going into uh, Munchkin Land when the door opens, everything's in color, you know. So now we're upstairs in the barn, which has been turned into a luxury apartment, basically. <laughs> we have a big storeroom here. My wife's office and our bedroom here on the second floor. Vaulted uh, knotty pine ceiling and look what's out there. If I get up here close enough to get it to focus. Beautiful view of the lake. I sleep like a baby in this room for some reason. But the ultimate reason I'm here is now I couldn't show you this. I had just sheetrocked this room last year and that's pretty much all I did. I had the toilet hooked up. No flooring. The walls weren't painted. The walls weren't taped. The cabinets. Now those cabinets go in between the rafters. These rafters come down two feet apart. And rather than just boxing off and wasting this space, now you've got storage cabinets for towels and, and whatever. A little 500 watt electric heater in the corner. Um, LVP vinyl flooring and cider oak on the floor. We roadkill scored this Kohler toilet and this Kohler pedestal sink uh, near my home in western New York uh, which included the nice little wrought iron towel rack and shelf unit for above the toilet and the wife up here at the lake saw somebody had this big mirror out by the road. It had a wooden frame but we just took the wooden frame off. Chevy Chic uh, barnlet type light. We do have a a light fan of course, you can see it's painted a, a vivid turquoise blue, which really brightens it up, looks very tropical. But my favorite is, I call this the Star Trek shower stall. It looks like something you'd step into to transport from the Enterprise down to the planet or something. But we had to have that because if you notice, maybe if I turn this light off, it'll be better. How close it comes to the ceiling. If we bought one of the shower stalls with the door that swung out, there was a good possibility it would bang into the ceiling all the time. So we got this one, which it's hard to show at this close distance, but the door rolls right back out of the way inside the stall. And it's all beautiful ABS plastic. Um, of course, we got the single mix shower. I just hooked up the uh, the water heater so let's see if she gets hot. Oh yeah, it's getting hot already. That water heater is just downstairs. See we kind of came up the stairs and around but the water heater is kind of below us here. And I need to test this shower because I finally cocked it all and uh, I want to make sure I don't have any leaks either. That's another reason for taking the shower. It was leaking over here in the corner bad. I don't see any water coming out now. All right. I had to leave a quarter inch cap around the flooring and the base. The base is all molded uh, plastic with a uh, whole styrofoam filled underneath. So it's solid. It's like covered with the, the plastic. And uh, all that plumbing is downstairs. I might have showed you the plumbing when I put it in. I don't remember. And so that's it. I'm going to take my first shower, so I guess you guys can't see that. But we're really, I'm really proud of this work. And uh, the pedestal sink, by the way, if your wife wants you to put it on a pedestal sink, talk her out of it. 
It's very difficult to get all the pipes lined up. It has toggle bolts that go into the wall to hold it. So you're trying to put the bowl together. You're trying to get the toggle bolts in there. You're trying to line up the pipes. You're laying on the floor. The wife is straddling, standing up, trying to get the sink together. It was a bit of a pain, but uh, we got her done. All right, guys. Take care. God bless. We'll see you next time. Uh, I have some other projects to do up here this week. I'm going to be putting a uh, alternator inside an old Mercury that never had a charging system and an old Mercury outboard, a 1988 20 horsepower. You've seen me do the electric start on it before. Now I'm going to do the charging cir circuit so I don't have to charge the battery every once in a while. It'll just keep charging itself. All right, guys. We're out of here. Turn off the hot water here. And uh, God bless, take care. Whew, fogging up. Let's take a look at the lake again. There's a great big uh, pink flamingo that everybody's calling Fifi up the lake. And my neighbor is a duck hunter. And that's his dock right next to ours. And uh, this is his answer to Fifi, the giant flamingo. Mallard. So we're in the Thousand Islands area of upstate New York. This is a small lake nearby, Black Lake. I'm an entertainer. I will be playing at the River Edge Resort the next couple of Saturdays. I'll be up there Memorial, uh, not Memorial Day, Labor Day week. I can't believe it's Labor Day already, people. All right. We have a rock out front. I don't know if you can see it. All right. Peace and tranquility from up here. We're away from all the scary stuff that they try to scare us into. God bless.